So, welcome to the second installment in the, uh, the build series that I'm doing. Today we're going to focus on what you see in front of me, minus all the crap on the bench. Partly because I just got the subframe back and uh, have all the parts to go through it. And also partly because it's pissing down rain outside and I have zero interest in getting wet. So let's get into it. So, we'll start out today with uh, the subframe. More specifically, these reinforcement plates. So these ones I bought from Garagistic. Um, pretty simple, you could probably do them yourselves if you wanted to get busy with a laser cutter. As you can see, we've welded the plates on the top. Obviously you can weld them underneath. Just uh, my welder found it was a bit easier to weld if they're on the top. It's a bit tight when you weld them underneath. Secondly, I don't really think it's a bad idea raising the engine up just a little bit. Just gives us a little bit more uh, clearance for the sump. So from the other side, you can see the other reinforcement that we've done. Again, this is a plate from Garagistic. And so the last modification that we've done to the subframe is these tabs. So uh, if you look carefully, these are actually tabs off an E36 subframe welded to uh, the E30 subframe. So what that actually does is it means that there is zero gap. If you look along here, there's no gap, no need for spaces. Bolt straight up to the E36 rack. Now from underneath, again, you can see there's no, uh, no gap. That's just all standard E36 steering rack. I'm not gonna be using these nuts, so I'll use the E36 ones. They're just uh, out in the car at the moment, and I cannot be bothered pulling the car cover off in the wet to put them on. So, uh, yeah. I think when we go across inspection, they're going to be, well, they won't even realize that anything's actually changed. Um, I've been under cars before that have had the spaces, including my own, and it's pretty easy to see when the car's on a hoist that there's spaces in there. So, uh, yeah, they shouldn't even notice. Now, there is two little concerns I've got for changing the tabs over. I think, generally speaking, it's going to be better, but there is just two little things that you need to consider. Firstly, it sits very tight between the subframe and the uh, this part of the steering rack. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. I think it's just touching. So I'm not sure if I'll get the Dremel out and just work a little bit of uh, metal off there. Or if I'll leave it and it'll be okay. Second thing to consider, and if you don't know what this is, then probably go Google it. Um, I think it will adjust the bump steer a little bit. Normally when you put these in, to get the steering rack sitting in the same place as the E30 steering rack, you have to put a little space underneath. Now obviously, there's no space underneath now, and uh, the steering rack's probably sitting about nine or 10 millimeters lower, which could affect bump steer. Um, I don't think it would be that much for, uh, to worry about, but uh, just something to consider, particularly if you say building a race car. So, this is another part of the steering rack that we've got done, the conversion. So I've had an E36 rack in the car before, and I had my own homemade uh, E30 slash E36 steering knuckle that I made. I'm um, just using a bit of aluminium in between them to replace the gilbo, and that seemed to work fine for me. However, don't think it's going to fly when we go over Regency for inspection. So, gone with this instead. This is obviously a Barina knuckle with an E36 and E30 end on it. Technically speaking, you don't have to replace the E36 end. You can actually just file down what's there from the Barina and make that work, but I kind of like the idea of putting both ends on it. Another reason I like the uh, Barina steering knuckle is because it's an updated collapsible unit. So it goes like that in the event of a crash, which I think is a lot better way of doing it with a Gilbo and probably also a lot better than the aluminium Gilbo that I put in when I did the conversion. So yeah, should make the car a bit safer if uh, I do accidentally slam it into something or if someone slams into me. Lastly, I just want to chat about the uh, engine mounts that I've got. So I'm pretty sure these are units from an E28 M5. I found the part number online. Uh, a lot of forum posts suggested that these are the ones to go with if you didn't want to solid mount it. Uh, they seem like a pretty good unit to me. Only thing is, a bit hard to get your hands on. So there was only one place I managed to find these mounts, and that was a seller on eBay, and I don't think they're actually up for sale anymore. 
They weren't crazy expensive. I think they were around 150 bucks delivered from the US. But uh, yeah, just a bit hard to get your hands on. So there is actually another option for engine mounts. Uh, if you don't want to go solid mounted, of course I only learnt this after I bought these two. But from what I've seen and heard and been told, you can actually get E36 engine mounts to work if you put them in upside down. Uh, I've kind of seen a few cars do this and they all seem to work fine. I haven't done it myself and I don't actually have an example here to show you. Well, not one that's on the bench anyway. But yeah, so that's what I've heard. Uh, I'll leave that one for you to chase up yourself. All right, so I think next episode we're going to be converting the aircon to uh, R134A. Got some goodies here all lined up. Just got to put them in.